Okay, this week we're gonna talk about zirconia implants. And a lot of questions always come up at different conferences, et cetera, about this topic. Is there a need? And I just wanna talk about the data and also about you know differences between titanium, zirconia, and some of the research that's been done on this field. Now, uh, a lot of people may not know this, but the zirconia implants, the major ones, were all basically, they're all basically Swiss, the major ones. And a lot of them were developed at the University of Bern, or at least they did the pioneering research. A lot of credit goes to this man right here, Dieter Bosart. He's the uh, histologist in Bern, Switzerland, and does a lot of the work and helped develop a lot of these systems, including the Zeramax system. And more recently, he's done a lot of work with uh, Stroman and a lot of different companies related to uh, integration of implants. Uh, I remember when uh, Professor Brainmark passed away and they wrote that you know, 50 years of osteointegration with Dr. Boozer and a couple other guys in Perio 2000. This was all the top guys in the whole world that were going to discuss, you know, one topic each related to implant dentistry to kind of, you know, as an issue for the legacy of Brainmark. And of course, the first one with implants was written by Daniel Boozer. Uh, the second one was related to osteointegration, and that was actually written by Dr. Bosart, okay? And it was on osteointegration of titanium, titanium alloys, and zirconia implants. And I want to speak about the work that they've done because uh, his group has really looked at integration of titanium, integration of zirconia, what are the differences. A lot of studies are available from the group in Bern, Switzerland, and I highly recommend people read them. Long story short, the zirconia implants typically integrate with similar rates of titanium, okay? Are they as good in bone? The answer is yes, slightly, you know, maybe a little bit less. But overall, if you use the right systems that are properly, you know, uh, roughened, okay, and it cannot be the same as titanium, of course, they go through their separate different protocols, you know, these implants integrate equally as effectively. We've done work, uh, my group, so this is my name here, Dr. Bosart's here, as well as Dr. Skoulian and Yufeng Zhang, looking at macrophage behavior and uh, gingival fibroblasts and how they integrate on six commercially available implants, titanium, zirconia, titanium, zirconia, dental implants. And the biggest thing that we saw was we didn't see a big difference between titanium and zirconia. Both of them were excellent biomaterials, very biocompatible. The biggest difference was whether or not these surfaces were hydrophilic. Okay, so most notably in the conclusions and clinical relevance, most notably modifications via hydrophilicity to both the pure titanium and titanium zirconia were shown to favor the secretion of macrophage pro-resolution markers and favor subsequent gingival fibroblast cell behavior when cultured with conditioned media, whereas surface composition had little effect. Okay, so long story short, again, from these studies, the zirconia performed quite well in these studies. Now, Emerging concepts with respect to titanium. A lot of perimplantitis, you know, around the world, uh, becoming a bigger and bigger issue, of course. And a lot of Albrechtson's group really has looked at, you know, multinucleated giant cells, foreign body giant cells, and looking at what they do in contributing to, you know, bone loss uh, and other things. And one of the studies that I was most fascinated with reading more recently, which was published in the Journal of Dental Research, which is a really good journal, of course, is metal particle release associated with peri-implant bone destruction, an emerging concept. And amazingly, it was written by a very well-known colleague, so Tobias Fretzworth, very well-known guy from Germany, uh, a friend of mine and somebody that I work with uh, in Michigan, with his, his uh, supervisor, Kathy Nelson. Look at the names here, Dennis Tarnow, Homley Wang, William Ginobili, you know, these are all the big names in, in dentistry. And they're talking about metal titanium particle release as being a contributor to parent plant disease. And here they write, metal, metal particle release as a potential etiol, uh, factor has been intensively studied in the field of orthopedics and is known to provoke uh, aseptic loosening around uh, basically in the orthopedic field, okay? In dental medicine, emerging information about metal titanium particle release suggests that the potential impact of biomaterials at the abutment or bone interfaces may have an influence on the pathogenesis of peri-implant bone loss, okay? Long story short, again, these guys are starting to come out with these articles, not just the zirconia guys, but also the regular titanium users are starting to say, hey, wait a minute, you know, there's titanium particles that are being released it's leading to more bone loss. You know, what do we do about this? 
more recently now, David Cochran, another big name in San Antonio with a couple other key, key guys here. Uh, Stefan Rowling's well known in the zirconia world. Simone Yanner is a big guy uh, that's done a lot of work with zirconia implants and burn. Ligature induced peri implant bone loss around loaded zirconia and titanium implants. Conclusion. These results demonstrate a significantly reduced ligature-induced inflama inflammation and bone loss for zirconia implants compared to titanium, okay, in this dog model. Interestingly, zirconia will not lead to particle release such as titanium, okay, titanium's worse. And there's a lot less peri-implant-titis in these zirconia animal studies. Of course, we don't have the same long-term follow-up, but, you know, these implants integrate very well. Uh, they don't lead to titanium particle release. And there's now enough data that suggests that the long-term periimplantitis may be lower as well. And so that's where a lot of people are starting to look into this. So in conclusion here, like I said, number one, we have similar integration to titanium. Of course, we have better aesthetics. So it's very obvious that if you have a white implant or a silver one and the threads start showing, the white one's gonna look more aesthetic. Um, you don't have these titanium particle release or corrosion. Um, and there's data, I put a question mark here, but there are data that's pretty strong demonstrating that there's better soft tissue healing around zirconia when compared to titanium. And of course, there may be better long-term periimplantitis. So that's kind of the big hype with zirconia right now. You'll notice that most of the major implant companies, you know, Nobel came out with the Nobel uh, Pearl, which is the exact same thing as the Zeramax system. Um, Stroman has the uh, Stroman Pure implant and they're doing work. Uh, you got Z Systems, you got Zeramax, you got many, many of the big guys, big implant players are starting to come out with their own zirconia implants. And the reason why is because, you know, there's probably going to be a bigger and bigger use in that field. And of course, um, you know, we did a lot of work over the years with the Zeramax system, which was one of the first ones to market and of course was developed uh, in collaboration with the University of Bern uh, with Dieter Bosart. For those that want to learn more about uh, zirconia implants, like I said, I can't think of a better guy to learn from. This is Dieter right here. And every year he comes down to Nova Southeastern University in Florida, and he does uh, a course with me. And we teach how to basically biomaterials. So we teach zirconia implants, uh, as well as more natural biomaterials such as PRF, dentin grinding, synthetic osteoinductive materials, and basically just combine everything together. Now, None of us are, you know, all holistic uh, in the holistic world, so to speak. But there is a need for it because there are more and more patients that want to go more natural. And for those patients, you need to offer them, you know, options. And like I said, in even the best labs in the world, we're still studying biomaterials that are going to facilitate uh, having better outcomes in these holistic candidates. So for those that want to learn more, like I said, you can find this on purefedu.com at Going Green. Okay, so thank, thanks everybody for your attention this week and see everybody next week.